All right, you know what time it is. It's Halloween and this year I have three things I'm going to scare you with. The first thing I have to scare you with is a spooky cube solve. Leave a comment if this is faster than your PB. But seriously though, I spent a while solving this and it was so frustrating. It's actually harder than the love cube. The second thing I have to scare you with is if you entered the giveaway, it has almost 8,000 entrants. You probably didn't win. If you're one of the lucky winners, congrats and follow the instructions in the description. Of course, thank you all for participating. Thank you for Speedcube Shop for providing the prizes and gift cards. Also, if you've missed it, make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell so you know when I have giveaways. The third and scariest thing I have today, Toys R Us still exists. I actually went and bought some Rubik's Cubes. Most of the cubes in my videos come from Speedcube Shop. Remember to use the discount code JPERM. And they send me cubes for free, but I spent $37 on this, so don't ask me for anything ever again. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is probably not a very good cube, but at least it can get people into speed cubing, so not a bad thing. So we'll start with their original non-speed cube. This one costs about $13, so I'll be comparing it to cubes such as the MGC and the MF3 RS3M. Just kidding, I just hope it's better than a $5 cube. Ugh. All right, nice looking, we got shiny tiles. Yeah, so you guys know the part in my videos where I do like really fast turning. Well, like I'm trying my best. I'm also thinking this is intentionally made a little bit worse to add value to their speed cube because this is not meant for speed cubing, just meant for people as a, just a puzzle to have in their house. So I'll look into its speed cubing elements, but keep in mind that this is not really for speed cubers. We'll see if it has any corner cutting at all. All right, great. At least the, the old versions could not corner cut even a little bit. So it looks like that's where it is unable to cut the corner anymore. Uh, if we look at regular corner cutting, also quite small, so, um, at least it can a little bit. It's not like the old ones where we, it's perfectly aligned and you turn and you can't figure out what's wrong and you have to like, oh, maybe something here is aligned or you, if it can't turn up, you just turn the other way. I mean, that's what I used to do when I had my original cube. I mean, if you're gonna do wrist turns on this, it's not the worst. Because I've made a beginner tutorial and yes, I read the comments, I know what's going on with people who have their first cube. So I really like that these are tiles rather than stickers. And one reason is because it doesn't get damaged. But then another reason is because you can't actually take them out. That's perfect because people switch the stickers around and their cubes become unsolvable and then 10% of the people think my tutorial doesn't work. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to even pull a piece out, but if I can't, then again, that's great because when people disassemble their cubes, they tend to mess things up. So in case you didn't know, if you put a cube back together randomly, there's only a one in 12 chance that it becomes still solvable. I'm sure that accounts for some of the dislikes, but guys, read the pinned comment if you're trying to learn how to solve the cube. All your answers are in there. All right, so for the purposes trying to serve, it's actually pretty good. But for a speed cuber, it sucks. That's why we're looking at the speed cube now. New advanced spherical core. We moved away from that a long time ago, so not a bad sign. Also, I saw one in the store with one of its components missing. Great quality control. All right, all these customization tools, we have washers, springs, lube, a screwdriver, and a pro pack. Just what I needed how to disassemble and reassemble along with instructions. More instructions on the back. Find out more about speedcubing, go to the speedcubing page on the jperm.net website. All right, let's see if this is any good. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this could be worse than the non-speedcube. There is so much friction in here, I don't even understand. All right, corner cutting, reverse. Oh no, okay, it's about the same. I was hoping it wouldn't be worse. Uh, and then regular corner cutting, let's try how much the other one could. So it can do around the same amount as the non-speed cube, but maybe a little harder. Uh, yeah, it's not looking very good so far. Yeah, this cube made so much more sense. I'm sure you could turn this into a better speed cube than the actual speed cube they're trying to sell to you. Oh, I can't believe it. This is actually way slower. Maybe they're trying to encourage me to use lube, so that could be fair. I'll figure out soon. Also, I think this is a different core. This one might not be a ball core, but this one, um, if it's reminding me of anything, it's the Rubik's 4x4. I don't know if they've ever improved on their 4x4, but that one had a ball core as well, and oh my God, it was impossible to turn. Even if you aligned all the pieces correctly, the core might not be right and so it's kind of random whether or not you just completely can't turn. Solving on that cube is actually like the worst experience. So the lesson here is ball cores are not good but let's try out the lube and see if that helps at all. Cube lube. Now that's the fourth scary thing today. All right down to business. Okay I was going to pull out a piece 45 degrees and pull like this but I don't know if the ball core lets me do that. 
Told you I need the Pro Pack. Oh no. Oh, so that's what these little holes are for. I'll put the screwdriver under here. Okay, someone fried an egg on it. All right, got the screw out. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay. This is an interesting ball core. <laughs> All speed cubes nowadays use pretty much an identical looking core. Not exactly the same, but for example, here's my Waylong WR. It's got just like a spider core in there and then it's connected to the centerpiece here. I could take out the screw, but I don't need to to take the cube apart. Okay, the Pro Pack tells me everything I have to do, so I'm gonna go follow this. Be right back. I lubed the cube at step 10 and they tell me to go on the website to find out how. I am not happy right now. So I went on rubix.com and it says go to the speed cubing section. So I went there and there is nothing about lube on this page. There's stuff about world records, which by the way, isn't even up to date. Stuff about competitions, which is great. If you don't know what they are, they're basically events, not so much competitions that you get to meet other cubers at. So this is some pretty great information, but nothing about lube here. Okay, let's try searching how to lube a cube. <laughs> oh, never mind. That's just my tutorial. Not designed for the legit Rubik speed cube. Okay, I found the Rubik's YouTube channel. This is probably the right one. Okay, the latest lube tutorial is here, four years ago. What is that font? I mean, I can read it, but it hurts. Okay, I'll link this in the description if you want to see it for yourself, but basically you lube it and then wipe it off. So instead of using like a reasonable amount of lube, this is trying to convince you to use way too much lube. You're probably going to end up using like half of the entire thing. And then when you wipe off the excess, you get a thin film, as they describe it, a thin film of lube over your cube. I mean, that's probably fine, but if you just put a tiny bit on a few pieces, it's going to do the same thing. Because when you turn the cube, the lube moves around. All right, forget this. I'm just going to do it my own way. So I've disassembled everything except for the core, and it actually says in step six of the instructions that this is going to be a very hard part. So you know that if the video ends here, I didn't make it. Okay, that was supposed to be a joke, but I'm in pain right now. So as I push these, I don't know if I'm pushing enough. I'm trying my hardest. This is supposed to be for kids. I can kind of open it, but I can't stick anything into this crack. It's too small. The screwdriver doesn't go in. My fingernails don't go in. Actually, one time I got one fingernail in, but it wasn't able to do anything and my hands are actually dying. I read in the instructions, there are already springs in here, so I'm just gonna put it back together and lube it. All right, it was a struggle, but I'm almost done with this. I'm just gonna lube these pieces before I finish. So as always, I'll just try to lube where these pieces are gonna make contact. Woo, I am a speed cuber doing speed cuber things. I feel like the lube did an okay job, but it's also just like super loose right now. And it's just a little better actually. Ooh, it can corner cut at this loose of a setting. Probably should make it a little tighter. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to. Okay, it's been tightened. Let's test it out. All right, it's definitely usable. Um, this is almost the tightest and it still feels quite loose. Maybe the lube did a very good job at speeding it up. Sorry if you can't hear me over the sound of the cube. This is about the loudest thing in the world. Here's the Waylong WR. Already not a super quiet cube. And here's the quietest one I have, the Tengen. And just in case you forgot. Yeah, it can definitely corner cut now after you loosen it a bit. Actually, it can corner cut like 45 degrees. So like not bad, but I mean, the cube is extremely unstable and hard to use. Uh, reverse corner cutting, it's okay, I guess. For comparison, most good speed cubes nowadays will be able to easily corner cut past 45 degrees like that. And for the reverse corner cutting, just um, almost one whole piece. So not there, but there. So I tried some of their lube in the non-speed cube and it's actually, I would say this would be better if I could loosen it because this is so tight and the speed cube at least can be loosened. For being a speed cube, for its customizability, I am thoroughly unimpressed by this. Also, I cannot stress enough, this is way too loud to be using at home and turning very fast. So here are a few solves on the cubes. I definitely do better on the speed cube and I don't think that's because of the ball core technology. I think it's just because I loosened it a bit and that's honestly the main problem with the non-speed cube. Now, one thing I love about the ball core is how loud it is. I'm not sure how much your parents and your neighbors and the rest of your city is gonna like it. So if you had to choose between these two, maybe get the non-speed cube and you can't keep practicing if you use the Rubik's speed cube and your parents have already taken it away from you. And remember, it's nothing against Rubik's here. I think their speed cube is not very good compared to other speed cubes, which is why the poor review, but the regular cube, besides being a bit pricey, as I said, I think it really makes sense for what it's trying to do.
So end screen, I'll put on some video series to reviews of cubes that are actually very good. And they're also cheaper than the Rubik's products. So anyway, thanks for watching. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you guys next time.